G'day, this is Hank David from Aussie Grown Radio with today's words of encouragement from Aussie Grown singer-songwriter Melissa Ferreira. On this podcast, Melissa has invited her sister in Christ, Ashley Williams, to talk about what it means to be united in the body of Christ. Ashley Williams is a growing Christian influencer on social media, and she's mostly known for her prophetic messages on TikTok. She has a passion for influencing the young women of her generation to dive deeper into their walk with Jesus. Stay tuned as Aussie grown artist Melissa Ferreira welcomes Ashley Williams on today's Words of Encouragement. This is Melissa Ferreira and as Hank David noted, today we have a guest with us and her name is Ashley Williams. She's my sister in Christ and she has a special place in my heart. Both of us have had the opportunity to have some deep discussions about Jesus, which has really been great. So Ashley, we want to warmly welcome you on today's Words of Encouragement. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure and we're really glad that you're with us today. So as Hank noted, we wanted to talk about what it means to be united in the body of Christ. So the first question I'm going to ask you is what does unity in the body of Christ mean? Yes. So to me, unity in the body of Christ means all of us operating in our God ordained giftings and callings and then using that to help one another. And even this morning, it's so funny because I was sent a message, a text message, and it literally was quoting 1 Corinthians 12, um, just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. We are each a critical body part. And it's so important that we know our specific functions and work on mastering that. And for example, if I'm an arm, but I don't know that I'm an arm (laughs) and I try to operate like an ear, I would be a lousy arm and a lousy ear. So to me, it means each of us living in alignment with God in our God-given identities as a whole. That is amazing. And I like how you actually spoke about knowing your place in the body of Christ. So if you are an arm, like you would do much better as an arm Mm -hmm. if you knew (laughs) that you were indeed an arm. So Mm -hmm. that's amazing. And I really like that and how you emphasize that. So the next question I wanted to ask you is why is unity in the body of Christ important? Yeah, so I believe unity in the body of Christ is so important because it allows God to flow how He wants to flow. And being unified creates a force that is unstoppable. And also having unity in the body of Christ and having a strong Christian community is so important. And for a long time, I underestimated the power of that. For example, I used to have unity, but not in the body of Christ. So I was surrounded by non-believers and it made me dull in my faith and it caused me to live a lukewarm life very comfortably. And so the unity I had didn't bring God glory or pull out the things that the Lord placed inside of me. So I never fully understood before why community was so important, even though I used to hear people say that all the time. But within the last three months, God has truly opened my eyes to how amazing life is when you are surrounded by people who are also on fire for God. And um, even you, Melissa, Melissa actually used to send me messages with words of encouragement sometimes as she felt prompted by the Lord. And I would wake up and check my phone and have a prayer or a word of encouragement waiting for me. And as I would start my day and during those times, those messages would single handedly like keep me going and what God was having me do, because there were times where I was maybe losing faith or feeling like I wasn't on the right path or that God had forgotten about me. So um, he sent Melissa to encourage me on those tough days. So I just want to thank you, girl, (laughs) for your obedience. But that's a real life example of why unity is so, so important to the body of Christ. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. And yeah, I've had the opportunity to connect with um, Ashley, which has been super great. And um, she's been a blessing to me and both of us have had the opportunity to connect. And that's amazing. I like how you touched on 
um, you know, sometimes we do go to church um, and you were touching on how we do have connections with people, but sometimes it's not necessarily in the body of Christ. And so it's mm-hmm. so important to just have those connections and get that encouragement, get that strength, get that support. I think that's crucial. That's why we actually spoke about unity in the body of Christ and we thought it was a great topic to touch on today. And um, that's what we're going to expand on. So number three, Ashley. So this question is really, really important, I reckon, from what I've been seeing on social media. I've been seeing a lot of people tearing their brothers and sisters down on social media, which I must say is absolutely not God's will for us. So the question is, how does God bless us when we stand united to encourage one another instead of tearing one another down? Yeah, so I love this question. I feel just the same as you. So I feel like the more we operate from encouragement and keep our eyes on the Lord, the more efficient we run. I feel as though tearing each other down or pointing out things in others just makes us move slower as a whole. And it's almost like we're, if we were running a race together and if all of us were focused on the same finish line, we would get there quickly, right? But if mm-hmm. we are running a race together, but we're looking at the people next to us, that's a recipe for disaster and could be dangerous. And at the end of the day, it would slow us down. So we are all just trying to run the same race. I think it's important to keep our focus on that. And I think God blesses efficient trees <laughs> that bear good fruit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And also, I was going to ask you, so you were talking about how we need to keep our eyes on the goal. And so how do you think we can really support our brothers and sisters in Christ in the middle of running this race? So how can we stir them on um, instead of tearing them down? Even if we disagree with some things that we see, how can we mm-hmm. really go about um you know, encouraging them and standing united in the midst of disagreement. Yeah, I think first just taking everything to God. I think a lot of us, when we try to do things in our own strength, I think we tend to get caught up in wanting the other person to agree with us or what the Bible says this and people, it gets a little bit messy when people have different interpretations of certain things. And I think if we just bring things to God and just remember that the battle is not against flesh and blood, Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we forget that. I think we turn our eyes from God and from the word and we turn our eyes to each other, pointing out things in one another, which like I said earlier, just makes us get to the finish line slower versus having our eyes on God and taking things up in prayer um, and just remembering, yeah, that the battle's not against flesh and blood Mm -hmm. and to just be obedient to God and see what God wants us to do about a certain situation. If God doesn't want us to put our hands in something, then we will obey Him. (laughs) You're right. Yeah, I think it's just obedience to the Lord because I think some of us try to take on responsibilities Mm -hmm. that are not Mm -hmm. ours to take on. Exactly. And we see things and oftentimes we think we need to put our hand in, but really God's telling us to keep it to ourselves. And um, that's Mm -hmm. really important. And um, I just wanted to ask you if we were asked by the Lord to actually confront something, um, how do you think we can do that? So what are some of the tips you would give us to do that in a considerable way, um, in a caring way and in a gentle way? I would say to ask questions and to have a gentle approach and to seek to understand. Um, Because if you read the Bible, Jesus asked a lot of questions that Mm -hmm. caused people to reflect on themselves, to have kind of self-accountability with some of the questions. It was a very gentle approach to say it without saying it almost Mm -hmm. in a way. And so I think that asking more questions, seeking to understand and just having a more curious approach is very key to having more unity and not having such a divide. That is so good. And like you said, asking questions, it's so easy to fall into making assumptions 
or making a conclusion based on what we hear or based on what we see but oftentimes what we're seeing might be ambiguous so we might Mm -hmm. have a different perspective to what the person is Mm -hmm. intending to get across to us so asking questions is super important number four jesus prayed that we would be one with him and one with the body of christ in john chapter 17 verse 20 to 21. How do you think we can apply that today in the body of Christ? Yeah, so I actually have the scripture up. So 20 through 21, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. And I think we can apply that first by walking in obedience and becoming one with Jesus. Because when we're operating from a place of obedience, we can function as we were designed to function in our role in the body of Christ. And you and I are perfect examples. Mm -hmm. So you saw me on social media, but Mm -hmm. I actually never wanted to be on social media. I was simply obeying what the Lord had called me to do. So the Lord had called me to social media But my obedience to him eventually connected you and I, and then you, because of your obedience, followed promptings from God um, by messaging me. And here we are on the podcast. Exactly. Jesus. So I think of being one with him first and having your steps led by the Lord is key to becoming one with the body of Christ. That is so good because you're right. So if we're connected to the same Holy Spirit, which we should Mm -hmm. be as Christians, then we have the mind of Christ and you have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. And when God tells us to do something, we come into agreement with it Mm -hmm. because we're both listening to the same Holy Spirit. And so that's very important to remember that God can do so much through us if we connect with His Holy Spirit, like Ashley pointed out, and really just being obedient. I think Mm -hmm. it's important to just listen to God, do what He tells you to do, and He will bring His um, children alongside of you who actually obey Him as well. And He'll bring to pass what He wants to do in your lives. So question Mm -hmm. number five, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So it's interesting that Jesus actually emphasizes that the impact of his presence is great when two or three are gathered in his name. Tell us a bit about what you think Jesus actually meant when he said that. Yeah, so I think he's intending to say that we are we are cultivating an opportunity for God's presence to enter when two or three are gathered in his name. When we are gathered with our brothers and sisters in Christ, that's creating an environment that allows God to enter and to move and to flow through us how he desires to, which is true because um, I can be gathered with non-believers who have no interest in talking about the Lord, but it's hard for me under those circumstances to cultivate God's presence in a conversation where it's not necessarily wanted. But when I'm speaking with a sister or brother in Christ, the presence of God just flows effortlessly and it ends up bringing me closer to God at the end of the conversation. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And sometimes we wonder why you know we might not particularly feel god's presence in certain places or when we're having certain conversations but what we need to understand is that we're not necessarily in places where god wants us to be sometimes Mm -hmm. or sometimes we're not really having conversations that please him so when we Mm -hmm. gather in his name that's when we're actually having conversations about him and so i believe his presence is greater um, just as you noted and i just wanted to ask you how do you think that um, we can actually get um, more success out of doing things for christ if we actually had more agreement Um, And Mm -hmm. how can we deal with disagreement if we were actually doing something for Christ, um, but we didn't agree with our brother or sister um, in an actual task that we had to carry out? Yeah, I feel like I feel like it just ties into the whole obedience thing. I feel like we could do more for Christ the more we operate out of obedience and kind of just die to our flesh because our flesh might want to go one way, but God might have us going another direction that we wouldn't even have planned for ourselves but I'm just thinking about like my life I have was planning a whole different direction I thought I was going to be in 
working in a corporate office my whole life kind of like off the grid behind the camera and mm -hmm. God called me to this life to be in front of people and to be mm -hmm. on social media and to be connecting with other um, Christians and it's just been so amazing and um, but I have had a lot of um, like you said disagree disagreements as well mm -hmm. with the body of Christ being on social media it's been actually pretty surprising I've been just been obedient to the Lord how much pushback I've had how I respond to that I really just bring it to God and I just remain faithful to what he tells me to do and to not let that deter me because not everybody sees what's behind the scenes um with my relationship with God and I just have to be obedient to the Lord and to not engage in conversations I guess that aren't fruitful for God and just to keep my eyes on the Lord and what he's calling me to do and to make sure that any conversation I engage in is fruitful or productive or what the Lord is telling me to engage in. That is that so good. Sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And also how you're saying about obedience, it comes back to that and that's really important. But how do you think we can engage in bigger tasks um, with people? Um, and you know, when we have disagreements, how can we sort those, sort those through? I, I feel like that's a good question for me because I have not had too much personal experience mm -hmm. having to disagree, but that is a really good question. How would you answer that? Can I ask you how you would answer that? Can I flip it on you? <laughs> <laughs> I like what you're doing there, Ash. Okay, so um, yeah, so like I said, so if it's a smaller disagreement, I think just coming to a mutual agreement that we can agree to disagree on mm -hmm. some of the simple things. Um, but if it's a larger sort of issue, I would say like, you know, go and pray about it. But also, like you said at the start, ask questions, make the person reflect try to come to a mutual agreement where it doesn't necessarily go against the standards in the Bible, which is our final authority. So it, mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't go against that and breach that, then I think, you know, we can go ahead and do it um, and do that task together. Or I would say, take time out from each other, go pray about it and come back mm -hmm. and have a chat about it, reflect on it and, and hopefully, um, you know, you guys would be in agreement with scripture, but if there is an agreement with scripture, I'm not quite sure if God wants us to be in that place in the first place, if that makes yes. um, sense. So, um, that's what I would say. Yes. And to add to that, I would also add to make sure to check your fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. because a lot of times it's easy to respond to disagreements or yeah, like disagreements and then your fruits of the spirit are coming from like, anger. You know, mm. you're coming from a place of anger. You're wanting just to win. You're wanting to um, be right. You're wanting to prove a point. And I think it's important in those times too to really check like the fruits that you're bearing. Are you being gentle? Are you reflecting the love of Christ? Mm. Are you being kind? Are you being seeking to understand? I think that's also key because we can forget that. And we're representatives of Christ. So how we disagree with each other should set the standard of how the rest of the world should disagree with each other. So if we are, you know, pointing at each other and bearing bad fruit, then, you know, that, what does that say about us? You know, so I think, yeah, definitely to add to that, just making sure in disagreements that we are being mindful of our fruit. What fruit are we bearing? What are we bringing? Are we representing God well in this? That is really good. I think that's so important to make sure that we're linked with Christ in whatever we do, because if we're not, we're not going to have the fruits of the Spirit, like you said. Mm -hmm. And we are examples to the world, like Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And so um, that is super important. Thank you so much for, for that insight. It really helps, I think, all of us to remember where we're operating from, whether that be from the flesh or from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Question six is part of being united with one another is about learning how to get along with one another. Give us some examples of how we can use open communication to solve issues in the body of Christ instead of resolving to close communication. Yeah, I think that just ties back into, I would say, asking a lot of questions and seeking to understand. I think. Mm -hmm curiosity is much more effective and gentle than 
you know, to bring resolution or correction than um, assumptions or finger pointing. So mm -hmm. I think just being gentle, um, asking questions, being curious, asking self-reflection questions to ourselves and to others. <laughs> um, I think that would be effective for open communication mm -hmm. to solve issues. Yeah. And some people don't like communicating. Let's just put it that way. There might be mm -hmm. some people who are listening and they find it really hard to confront or to have a chat or um, tell people how they feel. What would mm -hmm. you say to them? Mm, that's a good one because for me, I can relate to that in a sense because mm -hmm. I I'm bad at confrontation. Mm -hmm. I have to remember that even Jesus was confrontational. I yep. had this this twisted i guess um belief that that the more quiet i was the better and you know being confrontational mm -hmm. wasn't christian and that i just kind of had to take everything laying down but i had to be reminded that in the bible jesus actually did confront people mm -hmm. and jesus kept it real and jesus was not mean but he was honest and yep. so i think that for me i think it's just important use jesus as a role model ask questions be honest um be truthful um but don't you know be mean or mm -hmm. you know condemning um but that's what i would say use yeah. jesus as a role model <laughs> yeah that's so true like so ash you were saying that you find it a bit difficult to confront but mm -hmm. i feel like that could be a really great benefit as well because then you have that good balance between um, having a good think about what you're going to say but before you say it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the sort of person who likes to talk about things. If there is an issue, I will talk about it. But I, I do take my time to think before mm -hmm. I just talk. And I like to be gentle. I just feel that it sorts things out so much more mm -hmm. better because I find if we don't talk about it, there's misunderstandings. That, you know, we hurt people. Um, yes. And then our minds are all over the place and we don't know what's going on. And that's us lurking in darkness, not knowing, um, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening with the other person or the other party. So I think it's important to shed light on issues and yes. um, really talk about it. Even if you feel uncomfortable, pray about it, have mm -hmm. a chat. And it really does bind us together in unity because if we didn't talk about it, it leaves us in the unknown and we're just not able to be united and function, um, you know, together. So it's really important to chat about any issues that you have. Um, yes. Some of the examples I wanted to bring in before we close is that I've seen um, oftentimes people have issues with other people in the body of Christ, but they don't talk about it. Sometimes they just cut off completely. Um, mm -hmm. They won't tell you why. They've just disappeared and you don't know what's happening or mm -hmm. where they're at and I've seen it I've heard about situations like that and so what do you think about that do you obviously I'd say it's an unhealthy approach um, mm -hmm. to have in the body of Christ I think today on social media they actually call it ghosting is that mm -hmm. right I might be wrong yes that's am I right <laughs> I'm not into all the um, terminology on social media mm -hmm. uh, but you can correct me if I'm wrong that is yes that is so true I think that um I used to struggle with that too. When I didn't have anything to say, mm -hmm. I would just ghost people. And it's so, un it is, it is <laughs> unhealthy because I, now, now I am much better at expressing myself or mm -hmm. coming to a resolution. But before, when I didn't see a solution, the only solution is to cut off, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I didn't see a unity or a any sort of agreement or whatever i would cut off and i think that is what we tip sometimes do to people today as christians we um cut off or exclude you know mm -hmm. and that is unhealthy because there's people aren't all good or all bad mm -hmm. and i think that's something that the world will kind of teach um is that people are either good or they're bad in a sense they're either all good or they're all bad they're either on my team or not and that's not necessarily the case you know mm -hmm. we all need grace and um so yeah i think that it is important as i'm getting older too and just much more mature in my faith and more mature as a woman that it is important to communicate and to be 
confrontational in a gentle way and to talk about the things that are uncomfortable and to try to work together for a resolution or at least to understand or to say your piece and um yeah there's a very strong uh cancel culture today mm -hmm. in society and that hurts my heart because it causes people i feel to feel the need to be on their tiptoes and yeah, to right. tiptoe yeah. around people like if i make one mistake then even though I'm 99% good, the 1% mm -hmm. bad is gonna override the other fruits that I have, you know? And I feel like the cancel culture and ghosting people, it just kind of keeps people on their tiptoes feeling scared that, um, mm -hmm. you know, that they're gonna be cut off or ghosted or canceled and there's, so much grace that we need to give to others all over the world so i think it's very important that we just keep that in mind yeah that's so important and also i was just going to say that you mentioned how we keep people on their tiptoes mm -hmm. as it is and i think it's important to understand if we truly love god we will love people Mm -hmm. And if we truly have genuine Christian friends in our lives, mm -hmm. then we shouldn't be so afraid that if we do one small thing by accident, that's not right, that we're afraid they're going to cut us off because mm -hmm. that's not true unity and that is not true friendship and that is mm -hmm. not true genuineness in being united in the body of Christ. Um, yes. So I think it's very important to be open when you're in you know connection with your brothers and your sisters in Christ that there can be mistakes made yes. and not to make them feel afraid that they can't be themselves around you mm -hmm. or be human you know um as much as they're led by the spirit we're all human we make mistakes and so not making them feel like you know they need to be super careful around you or you're going yes. to cut them off or you're going to be rude to them um we don't want to make people feel like that um, because there's no unity there's no genuine trust you can't build on a foundation that makes you feel like you're going to trip every time you make a mistake mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's very important to make sure that we do have expectation not that you go around all the time expecting people to make mistakes mm -hmm. but just being open-minded that mistakes happen and that's okay because you love God and you love people you're able to embrace them with grace mm -hmm. and you're able to work through those mistakes and you're able to then move forward um, instead of cutting people off. Um, one thing I always tell people, because I've seen this happen and it, it really hasn't had a good impact on the person being cut off or, um, you know, just really just cut off completely. Mm -hmm. But one thing I say is that if you cut your brothers and sisters off today, don't forget that when you go to heaven, you can't run away from them. <laughs> You're going to see them <laughs> for eternity. Um, so you, yeah. you might block them on media today, but when you go to heaven, you're going to have to own up to seeing them. Mm -hmm. literally not just every day but for eternity so that's something to keep in mind before you do that it's it's quite funny but it's true but um mm -hmm. you know it is something to keep in mind um is to obviously just try to solve things out but if there is obviously a person being nasty or rude um and then you you can take your time to cut off because you don't want to respond to comments like that but yes. if that isn't the case and it's not an extreme case, I really think that working things, you know, out and um, fixing things and being united together and solving things is very important. Because if you don't solve things, we can't be united. So yes. that's very, very important. And you know, it's so funny is that the more healthy I got as a person and the better boundaries I gained, the mm -hmm. more I was able to keep people around me without being so affected by mm -hmm. their standpoints on things. So it almost reminds me of um, 
back in the day, I used to really need other people's validation on mm. my thought or opinion, or I needed people to agree or to see my side. Like I, I needed the conversation to end with them seeing my point of view, right? Mm -hmm. And there would be division when they didn't see my point of view or when I didn't feel like they understood me or they didn't agree with me or they didn't see where I was coming from and it, it would bring division but I found that the more healthy of a person I be I became as an individual the more room for grace there was for people to disagree but for me to still remain intact and um, firm in myself and not bothered by that so I used to rely on other people to see my point I used to be one of those people who like I wanted you to see where I'm coming from mm -hmm. see my point like I'd be in the comments mm. going back and forth with someone just responding so that they would see where I'm coming from right mm -hmm. and then as I became more healthy and my validation didn't come from other people it, be it came from God I stopped relying on other people to um agree with me if that makes sense and mm -hmm. i would just bring it to god and i would be okay if someone had a different point of view because i was firm in my identity in christ and what god had spoken to me and i didn't mm -hmm. feel a need anymore to go back and forth with somebody in the comment section or mm -hmm. make someone agree with me or you know and i would be totally fine if they had a different um view on a situation than me and I could still love them. So I found the more healthy I got, the more I stepped into my God-given identity, the more grace and room I had for others because I, my source was not from their validation. It, my mm -hmm. source was from God. That is super important. Yeah, you're right. And just really knowing where your identity is. So if God spoke something to you, which the Lord really speaks to Ash and she, she likes to obey him and prophesy and I encourage you to keep doing that and you know like you were pointing out when you know God's spoken to you it doesn't matter what another person says right because mm -hmm. you're just rested in that so even if they say the total opposite you're still at peace because mm -hmm. you know that that doesn't change what God spoke to you so you're yes. resting in that it's sort of thinking about Noah as well he was told to build an ark people mm -hmm. would have thought he was crazy or as we yes. say cray cray here mm -hmm. so they, they would have thought he was crazy and mm -hmm. um, but he still did the task and the outcome was great so the outcome was a blessing he was saved and his family was saved and so don't let people talk you out of what God tells you to do. Be united with the Holy Spirit first and out of yes. that, let everything else flow into unity yes. with those around you. Um, so yeah, that's great, Ash. I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate you and um, just the words of encouragement, the insight that you poured into, into the podcast. And we're really looking forward to what God wants to do in and through your life. And we'd really love for you to pray for those listening and that would be fantastic. Yes, I would love to. Okay. Lord Jesus, thank you for every person who is listening to this podcast. I pray you would allow your children to feel just how near you are. Lord, I pray that you would show them that you are not a far away God. You are a father who knows the hairs on our head and you know the intimate details of our life. Each one of us is so special to you, God, and so uniquely made by you. And I pray that your children's eyes would be open to the identity that you have given them, Lord. I pray that your children would operate in the giftings and the callings that you have placed within them so that we can unite as a body and truly come together as one. Lord, I pray that your children would leave this podcast feeling encouraged and excited to take territory for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ash. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's Words of Encouragement. We pray that you continue to seek God and live in His Word daily. Until next time, Melissa Ferreira and I send you warm greetings and God's abundant blessings. Thank you.